Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome to a Friday edition of Inside Arsenal. I hope wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world, you're having a very good end to your week. It's very nearly the weekend. And that means it is very nearly time for what is quite possibly, in fact, not quite possibly, what is going to be one of Arsenal's toughest away games of the season at Newcastle tomorrow evening under the lights at St James's Park. It doesn't really get too much tougher than that in this Premier League right now. Mikel Arteta has been speaking this morning about that game uh, during his pre-match press conference at London Colney. He's talked about how difficult it's going to be. He's talked about the latest injury and team news, Gabriel Jesus, Emil Smith-Rowe, all that sort of stuff. Um, and he's been talking about Ben White, Ben White's new contract. So we'll get stuck into all of that in today's show. Of course, got a little bit of time for some of your comments and opinions as well. Uh, and let's get started, shall we? And let's get stuck into the team news, which is always important. Uh, Mikel was asked, any injured players back for Saturday? He said, we have another training session, so there is a possibility, but I don't know. <laughs> nice one, Mikel. That clears it up. I don't see how any of the injured players can come back for this one anyway, because Gabriel Jesus isn't going to be back. Thomas Part is not going to be back. Emil Smith Rowe is going to be not going to be back. I don't really know who else is injured, so I'm not sure who he's talking about there where he says there is a possibility. So I can't see any of that happening. He's talked about Martin Odegaard as well, who um, has been struggling with a little bit of a hip problem, was on the bench last weekend, didn't come on in that game against Sheffield United, was on the bench against again, again against West Ham midweek, did come on, scored, of course, right at the end, did look pretty lively. Mikel's been speaking about that and his fitness and how Arsenal have been trying to manage it. In recent weeks, he says we have tried to offload him a little bit because he had a little issue that he was struggling with. He felt much better in the last few days. We gave him a few minutes against West Ham, which was good. Uh, his contribution was really good. He will train today. And if he's fine, he will be ready. And I'm very, very confident that Martin Odegaard will be ready and that he will be started in this game. He was exceptional in the win at St. James's Park last season. Newcastle really struggled to deal with him. Um, whether that was a tactical thing, I'm, I'm not sure um, in terms of where he played, but Newcastle really struggled to pick him up. And I'm sure Arsenal will be looking for a very, very similar performance for him this time. And if there was a slight sort of tactical thing that Arsenal took advantage of with Martin Odegaard's positioning in that game and how he played, then I'm sure they'll be looking to do that again because, um, yeah, any joy you get up at St. James's Park, you want to try and replicate that. And I'm sure Arsenal will be thinking a lot about how they played last season, how they managed to win that game and trying to repeat a lot of all the good things that they did. Of course, one of the big things in that game was the performance of Granit Xhaka, who was absolutely excellent. He's not there. And that is a big blow. Well, not a big blow because it's not, he's been there for, a, not been there for a long time now. We're having to get, accept that. But I do think, and I spoke about it after the West Ham game, that position, that big sort of gaping hole in the squad that Xhaka left, which just hasn't been filled. Um, could be a bit of an issue, but as we'll talk about a little bit later on in this show, I think we're going to see that sort of Jorginho, Declan Rice uh, partnership in this game and Declan Rice trying to sort of play the, the granite Xhaka role from, from last season. On Emil Smith-Rowe's injury again, Mikel said, look, there's nothing has changed. He will be out for weeks. Interesting. He doesn't say a few weeks or a couple of weeks, just weeks. Um I really hope it's not a really bad one for Smith Rowe, but it doesn't sound great, I have to say. Uh, he'll be out for weeks. How many will determine how he progresses in the first few weeks? It's even there when he says how he progresses in the first few weeks. I mean, that doesn't sound great, does it? If, you know, if you're talking about how he progresses in those first few weeks, he, he's making it sound very much like it's a real long-term issue there. Says it's a big blow because he was getting some momentum and minutes. We decided to get the Emil that we needed, but unfortunately... He will be out again. As I spoke yesterday, I just think it's a real blow to Arsenal, but to Smith Rowe especially, because he he had worked his way back into the pecking order. That was really, really noticeable in the last few weeks. You know, he was starting ahead of Fabio Vieira. He was coming on ahead again uh, ahead of Fabio Vieira. That pecking order that we thought Smith Rowe was right at the bottom of, for some reason, whether that be his performances in training or whatever, he had worked, he'd seemingly worked his way back into that pecking order, back up that pecking order and you know, was beginning to look like quite a key player again. And then for him to get this injury at that exact time when he's done that, it's just a huge blow for him and for Arsenal. And uh, because you all know how much of a big fan of Smith Rowe I am. On Gabriel Jesus, who's asked about if he's going to be back after the international break. There have been reports that it is, that's going to be the case. It's going to be a December time job, which would make a lot of sense 
really, because what Arsenal got four games, I think, between now and the international break, only a couple of weeks, then you get another couple of weeks off, and then um, and then they come back, and you don't want to take any chances with Gabriel Jesus, so it kind of makes sense, but Mikel was said, and he said, look, I cannot guarantee that, we are trying to get that recovery as quick as possible, I said it would be weeks, but it's very difficult to put a time frame right now on it, um, God, how much I wish Arsenal had Gabriel Jesus tomorrow against Newcastle. The injuries to really key players, especially Partey and Gabriel Jesus, are just a real, real disappointment at this crucial stage of the season, especially when you go to these sort of games away at Newcastle. You want your best players in this team. And of course, Thomas Partey and Gabriel Jesus are right up there as two of Arsenal's very best players. And you think if Arsenal could have had a midfield that included Rice and Thomas Partey tomorrow, you'd feel so much more confident going into that game, especially if you've got Gabriel, Gabriel Jesus playing as the number nine. Ahead of you, they don't, obviously. So Mikel's going to have to come up with a couple of different solutions. I would suggest, as I said, it's going to be jo Jorginho and Declan Rice. What you do up front then is going to be interesting. Will it be Nketiah again or will he go with Kai Havertz? I suggest it'll be Nketiah, but uh, we shall wait and see. Kai Havertz did come up in the press conference in his performance against West Ham. Um, Mikel said, look, I'm not going to put it on any individual, as you would expect. We are a team and we play our, play our best as a team. When they don't, I am the man responsible for that. We all need to try and improve every day. That's the aim. He was then asked about sort of Granite Xhaka and, you know, how well Granite is doing in Germany, which I don't think it is a surprise to any of us. I think we all knew who's going to do very well in Germany because he's such a good player. And um, Mikel said, Granite was a key player. He played almost every game for us. We knew that it was going to take some time, you know, to move on from him like he did, especially when I changed his role. There are a lot of questions about it. And then he evolved in a great way. And here... It will happen the same. I thought that was interesting at the end there where he said here it will happen the same. I presume when he says that he's talking about Havertz and that he thinks he will evolve into this role just like Granit Xhaka evolved into that new role that Mikel gave him. The one difference I would say there, and again, this isn't me jumping on the back of Kai Havertz and criticising him for the sake of criticising him. It's even when Mikel changed Granit's role and asked him to play in that more advanced position and he wanted to get more goals out of him more, goal contributions, assists, that sort of stuff. You kind of saw it almost immediately that there was a change and Granite was really sort of contributing in games and making impacts in games. You're not just not seeing that at Kai Havertz. And again, I'm not going to go into it again because I spoke about it yesterday, but it's just very hard to see the signs that this is a project that is going to work with Kai Havertz playing in that role. You know, it's such an important role offensively, but defensively as well. I'm go back to that West Ham game, uh, sorry, the Newcastle game last season. And I remember there was one incident, I think it was at 1-0 still, when Granit Xhaka made a run back. He ran about 50 or 60 yards, busted a gut to get back, and he made one of the best clearances or blocks. You, It looked a certain goal. I think it was Joe Willock. I can't remember. It just looked a certain goal. goal. And then out of nowhere, Xhaka had come back 50, 60 yards to make this block to stop it going into 1-1. And you kind of look at that and what he was doing in that game up the pitch, down the pitch. And then you look at Havertz and yeah, you just think he can't do that. I, I'm yet to see any sort of signs he can do that and be that bigger presence at the back and going forward. And that's, you know, that is the big worry, of course. It's the worry of everyone. I don't think that's going to be an issue tomorrow because um, uh, it's something from Good and Philosopher says, when Havertz plays, there needs to be a system change. He is neither a left eight or a nine. He is only good when he plays underneath the centre forward. Please stop saying he should play as a lone nine. Did you not watch him at Chelsea? I did watch him at Chelsea, yes. But when I say he plays as a lone nine, it's not really a lone nine at Arsenal in this position because your Arsenal's main threats are the wingers. That's where the goals come from. So I don't it's in this formation that you play at Arsenal, you're not playing as a lone nine because you've constantly got the wingers going behind you and coming in, and you're the guy sort of holding the ball off and laying the ball and laying the ball off to the wingers, always creating the space for the wingers. So it's not a lone nine. It's more of a false nine when I'm saying Havertz should play there. Um, and I'm saying it as well, mainly because all the good stuff I've seen Havertz do since he's arrived at Arsenal has been playing in that position, in that type of role. I've not seen him really do anything in that left eight role. And so what I'm saying is if you're going to play Havertz, for me, from my own eye test of what I've seen from him this season, you play him as a nine or as a false nine, just because it's the only place I've seen him do anything really of note so far for Arsenal. Um, so that's what I was saying there. And uh, here's one from, um, oh, actually, no, I'll say that later. I don't know why that was, why I've got that one there. 
Um, there was another question, and that was it. It was from here. Let me just quickly find this for you and bring that off before I flip through the ball. Um, here it is. It's from Daniel. Said, I'd like to propose the idea of Zinchenko as a number eight with Tommy Asu playing at left back. I think with us not having a true number eight, Kai lacking confidence, it would be our best option. Um, sort of talking about how it's there. And again, I think from, from this game at the weekend, I just think it's going to be Georgia. So the whole lot Havertz argument, I think it doesn't, it's not really worth it this weekend because I don't think he plays. I think if he plays, he plays as a substitute because it's going to be, it'll be Minketia up front, I imagine, as the nine. And it's going to be Jorginho and Declan Rice. I think we'll have Jorginho holding and he played so well in that get in that position. Obviously, he struggled against West Ham a little bit, but he played so well in that position last season in the game against Newcastle. And I think he's going to be, he's going to have Declan Rice doing all the dirty stuff around him anyway. He didn't have that at West Ham. He was left isolated. I can't see him being left isolated this time at Newcastle because he's going to have Declan Rice there doing what Declan Rice does. Um, so I don't think we really need to debate the whole habit stuff now. I think... Uh, I think he's just, I, I'd be very, very surprised if he plays in this game. You know, Mikel's got some big decisions to make when it comes to um, to who plays it in the match. Oh, I'm struggling with the slides here. Sorry, everyone. Um, uh, but I think Jorginho is definitely going to be one of the players who comes in. I think Tommy Asu comes in as well. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. The fact that Zinchenko played against West Ham, it just, to me, means that Tommy Asu is starting this game. And when you look at the kind of what Arsenal are going to come up against against Newcastle, how intense this game is going to be, how strong Newcastle are going to push. You know, you saw what Newcastle did at Old Trafford in midweek, and that's with, with a weakened team, with a much changed team. That's just the way they play. They're so intense. They're so on it. They're so on the front foot. Arsenal are going to have to be so mentally and physically strong in this game. And that's why I think you've got Tommy Asu coming in, in the left-back position next to Gabriel. You know, that back four of White, Gabriel Saliba, Tommy Asu, that just looks really, really strong. And you would hope that's, you know, especially when you've got Declan Rice and Jorginho ahead of him, you know, that's a really strong base, I think, there to try and deal with what Newcastle are going to deal with. The big thing is, you know, are Arsenal going to have enough attacking threat to cause Newcastle problems? They caused them plenty of problems on the break last season. And that's when Odegaard was so crucial. They couldn't pick Odegaard up. He was getting the ball, receiving it, and then in space and just running at Newcastle. And that was causing all sorts of problems. Saka caused some problems. Martinelli caused some problems. Those type of players are going to have to have a really, really good game, I think. Really strong game to uh, to get the best um, out of this Arsenal side on uh, on Saturday night at Newcastle. But let me know what you guys think. Who should be starting, in your view? What's the starting 11 you'd go for against Newcastle? What the big decisions you think Mikel has to make when it comes to the team selection? Would you be playing Eddie Nketiah as your central striker? Let me know, of course, in the comments below. Mm -hmm. And Mikel was talking about Ben White, who's got a bit bit of a milestone coming up tomorrow if he plays, which, of course, barring any late injury, he certainly will. Uh, on making his 100th appearance for Arsenal, he was talked about that. and He was asked about how impressed he's been with the way Ben White has evolved since he arrived at Arsenal after that. A difficult start on his debut against Brentford, it's fair to say. Uh, he said, I think he's progressed in the right way in the last few years. He had a little bit of a difficult start, which is normal because it was a big jump with different expectations. He started to play as well in certain different positions, but I think he's shown a lot of determination and courage to overcome that. I think he has a big personality. I think he copes with pressure really well. He has a lot of quality uh, and he gives us different positions as he's been a key player with us. He was talking about his character as well. He said he's a really good character in his own way, the way he is, the way he presents himself, but he loves football. The way he trains every day, the way he applies himself is top. We need players like that. And that was in response to, um, you know, we know Ben White has said he doesn't really like watching football when he goes home he, because he's been there all day, training all day. The last thing he wants to do is watch a football match. And that has got a lot of attention in the past, him saying things like that, because people, I think, are just quite surprised like that. If you're a footballer, surely you want to watch football. You want to immerse yourself in football. Ben White's not that type of character. He wants to go home, relax, chill out, and just block football out of his mind. Uh, but when, you yeah, know, Mikel said, look, he does love football and because of the way he trains, how hard he works. It's all about loving the game. And he does. He was also asked about his contract, which is obviously a big thing. We've had a huge amount of contract renewals at Arsenal recently. Really, really crucial players, Saka, Martinelli. Uh, Saliba, of course, Gabriel, all those Ramsdale, all those type of players. Ben White is definitely going to be the next in the line to get this. I'd be very, very surprised if we don't hear something fairly soon when it comes to Ben White's contract. Talks are ongoing about getting this over the line and getting it done. And I can't see there being any issues from his side, from Arsenal's side. Uh, and Mikel was asked about it and what he's, where he's going to sign. He said, we are always trying to keep the squad in a healthy position in any way. And the club and Edu especially are working on that. And that was in the direct response to Ben White signing his uh, new contract and I can't that can't come soon enough because 
what a player. I, there are very few players in this squad, I would say, that uh, I like more than Ben White. I just think he's such an important player. I think he's such a fantastic footballer. Can play in any sort of positions, his technique, his quality. And he's, like Mikel says, he just deals with pressure. And I think he does. I think he really coats with pressure. He doesn't get phased by anything. I think that's a really strong attribute for any footballer to have. Uh, before I go, just wanted to answer this. Quite a few people have been getting in touch. And I hope there's not an issue because um, Aidenus12 says, Hi, Charles. Just wondering if you will be putting these up on audio platforms again. Maybe it's just my app of choice, uh, Pocket Casts but they've not been there since October 17th. That's surprised because I knew there was an issue with Google. It dropped out of Google Podcasts for some reason. They picked up an RSS feed that would that was broken. I've changed that, and I think it is now being picked up again by Google, but I hadn't heard of any issues anywhere else. Like It was still going into Apple, still in Spotify, Amazon. Uh, obviously, mine, it gets uploaded to Vacast, and I hadn't heard of any issues. Um so, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a worry that the Pocket Cast uh, doesn't seem to be working. Um, all I can say is that, it, it, you know, it's nothing. I don't think I'd heard anything of issue. Of there. I knew some people have been mentioning to me there was a problem with Google, but I think I've rectified that. And um, I checked and it does seem to be now getting picked up and there are plays happening through Google. So, um, so yeah, but you can get it from Apple Podcasts or anything like that. If you can't find it, if you're struggling with that that app, um, you know, it's certainly on Apple, Spotify, all that sort of stuff is getting picked up. So hopefully you can get to listen because they are still going on there. I still am uploading them uh, every single day. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for watching on this Friday. I'll be back tomorrow in the morning, posting another show, looking ahead to Newcastle game. We'll do predicted 11s. Let me know what you guys think, of course, as I said, about who should play, what your 11s should be. Have a big debate about that on tomorrow's show. And uh, until then, have a very good Friday. Enjoy your Friday evening wherever you are. And I'll speak to you very, very soon.